Zoom lenses or prime lenses? What's the difference between the two and which one's right for you or should you get a mix of the both? So let's get straight into talking about zoom lenses. Zoom lenses best feature is that it has the versatility of zooming in and out depending on the focal length the lens has. So for example, this lens here is a 24 to 105. So you can go from 24 millimeters all the way up to 105 millimeters. This is great for sports such as a football game. If you want to take a picture of the center back, for example, you can zoom into 200 millimeters. But then if you want to take a picture of the right back and 200 millimeters might be a bit too far so then that's when you zoom out maybe to 70 or 100 millimeters so you make sure you get the right back full in the frame however there's actually two types of zoom lenses you've got budget lenses and then you've got the more professional and premium lenses basically the difference between the two is that the budget ones has a variable aperture so for example this lens here is a variable aperture lens so whenever i'm shooting at 24 millimeters the aperture is at f4 however whenever i zoom up to 105 millimeters the aperture changes from 4 to 7.1 this makes the image get way darker and it causes for more things in the frame to be in focus which causes less background blur and subject separation this is why they're budget lenses and they're more targeted at beginners and hobbyists because a lot of the time they don't need the best of the best so by zooming into 105 mil you lose a lot of that light but if you're like a hobbyist and you might be shooting on auto mode then you're not really going to notice a difference because the camera is going to be like up in the iso or low in the shutter speed to what actually you need but if you actually are shooting in manual then you'll see the difference in brightness on the actual screen itself it will get a lot darker because obviously the aperture is closing which is allowing for less light to come into the frame the second type of zoom lenses are more premium and targeted at the professionals so for example they could be called canon l series lenses because they are for the pros now the difference between l lenses and normal variable aperture lenses is that it has a fixed aperture so that means for example canon have a 24 to 105 f4 version so when you zoom in from 24 to 105 the aperture stays the same at f4 so you don't lose any of the light and you don't lose any of the background separation or bokeh when you zoom in this is why they cost the big bucks because obviously pros don't want their aperture changing constantly all the time when they zoom in and out they want it to be consistent throughout the whole time you're shooting also the l series lenses might have a weather sealing option as well so you can go out in bad weather conditions whereas this one don't canon also have a 70 to 200 lens and basically because that's a 70 to 200 f 2.8 so when you're at 70 millimeters the aperture is 2.8 if you zoom into 200 millimeters the aperture is also 2.8 so that's why that lens is worth so much money because the aperture is at 2.8 which is really low anyway and to get that on a 200 millimeter lens is absolutely amazing and that's why they cost so much money because you can get that real nice bokeh and compression canon have a 28 to 17 f2 lens and basically that lens costs three grand and the reason why it costs so much is because it's basically got three prime lenses in one so it's got from 28 millimeters all the way up to 70 so it's basically three prime lenses you can fit a 35 a 50 and a 70 mil for example in that lens all at f2 and you can buy them lenses separately at prime lenses at f 1.8 or f2 so this is where we talk about what prime lenses are and prime lenses are basically lenses that don't zoom in so they have a fixed focal length of 35 so this is a 35 mil you can't zoom in you can't zoom out so if you actually want to get closer or further away from the subject you're going to actually have to physically move your own body forward or back to frame the subject people might think well what's the point in this if i can't zoom in and out i may as well just get a zoom lens because they're a lot more easier and helpful for me to use the reason why people choose prime lenses is because of the maximum aperture you can normally find prime lenses they have a maximum aperture of either f 1.8 1.4 or 1.2 and this basically means the aperture is opening super wide to let so much light in so it's really good for low light situation and low light photography this is why a lot of wedding photographers choose to have prime lenses because a lot of the time they're indoors and there's not a lot of good light so that's when they like opening up the aperture all the way to f 1.8 1.2 or 1.4 to actually get in that light so you don't have to up the iso too much the bigger the maximum aperture the more expensive it's going to be so for example canon's 50 mil 1.8 the difference between that and the 50 mil 1.2 is about 2300 pounds so that's the biggest difference between them two lenses is literally the 1.8 to the 1.2 it lets in more light and it creates more of a shallow depth of field when you are shooting portraits for example and it just completely crushes that background and creates wonderful bokeh i know it's absolutely crazy it's literally 2300 pounds just to stop down twice on your aperture that's literally the difference in the price to be honest obviously because of the weather sealing and the build quality as well but the main difference is literally that two stops of light difference an 85 millimeter 1.8 is going to let in so much more light than for example 
a 24 to 105 at 85 millimeters because obviously on the prime lens the aperture is 1.8 but with this variable aperture lens if you set it at 85 millimeters the f-stops at about 6.7 6.2 if you've got the actual professional l-series lens then that's still f4 so f1.8 to f4 is such a big difference in light as well and background separation so even if you do have a lens that covers 85 millimeters like this one here it doesn't matter because it doesn't let in nowhere near as much light and it doesn't have that dreamy bokeh in the background compared to this lens that's why prime lenses are so good and so loved the shallow depth of field you get from a 1.4 1.2 lens is absolutely amazing and that's why they're completely always used by portrait and wedding photographers because you just can't get that with zoom lenses the great things about prime lenses is that they're normally really small and then they're really light as well because obviously it's just one focal length unless you're going to go for the big 1.2 50 mil from canon or 85 1.2 that's when it gets really heavy but if you're getting something like the nifty 50 or the 35 mil 1.8 then they're really light and really compact so it's really easy to carry around with you it's great for portraits weddings low light conditions and that's why prime lenses are loved by so many photographers and videographers whereas zoom lenses are great for versatility because obviously on this lens you can go from 24 to 105 which makes them really great for traveling because you don't want to be constantly changing out lenses from a 35 mil to a 50 to an 85 whereas in this lens you've got all of that three lenses, four lenses, maybe even five lenses in one focal length here. So now you know the difference between zoom lenses and prime lenses, what each lens is used for and when you'll actually need to use it. I'll always think at least having one is an absolute must. So if you're heavily on only want to shoot primes, you're a wedding photographer and you're a portrait photographer and all you want to do is shoot in primes, then I still think it's worth picking up a zoom just for that versatility in case you do go away or if you're not sure what focal length you need. It's always good just to have a zoom lens in your bag just in case you need it. Whereas if you're only a zoom shooter and you've got the holy trinity so canon basically have a holy trinity of lenses they call it so they go from 16 mil to 35 mil 24 to 70 and then 70 to 200 that's the holy trinity and they've all got an f 2.8 aperture so the maximum aperture is really good and it lets in a lot of light but obviously it's nothing compared to like a 1.8 or 1.4 so even if you do have the holy trinity and that's all you need i still think it's good by picking up a prime lens even if it's the 50 mil 1.8 i still think it's worth picking that up just for them really low light situations or if you really do want to create way more shallow depth of field and get that real nice bokeh in the background of your images so that's it for me if you did find this video helpful hit that like button and then subscribe to see more tutorials and gear reviews like this in the future thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys on the next video see you later